Hi everybody, I'm Nettie Kay. Welcome back to my studio and to part five of our series on how to become a real artist. Last time we met we talked about the five basic tonal values. Today we're going to talk about color. That's going to be fun. But don't throw out everything else that I've said in the first five or the first four uh, lessons because they all tie together. We don't just say, well, uh, I'm not going to use the five basic tonal values because I'm working with color. No, you still use the middle tone, the dark, the light, the highlight, and the cast shadow. You just do it in color. Okay. Now, what we have to get past is uh, a problem. Do you remember when we talked about in lesson number two on stereotypical thought? Meaning, uh, if I draw a tree, I draw, draw a little trunk and I draw a thing on the top in my little house and my little chimney and my sunshine in the corner and my stick man. Okay, the same problem happens in the world of color. The apple is red, the sky is blue, the rocks are gray, the grapes are purple, the carrots are orange. Well, you know, not all of them. Here's some carrots. I've got some carrots that are orange, some purple, some yellow, some white. They're all different colors. So we've got to get out of our box and realize that there's some different colors in the world on the things that we think are just one color. They're not. So we're going to use a concept called complementary color. I know everybody's freaking out, going, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do about that. It's that little wheel and it's got all those colors on it and I don't know what to do. Here's a simple way to think about it. Uh, the complementary color is absolutely as opposite on the wheel as you can get and uh, is opposite in their colorific vibrations, okay? And so when you place them next to one another, they make each other look good. Okay, it's kind of like my husband and myself. I'm short, he's tall, he's dark, I'm light. Uh, he's a professor, I'm an artist, I'm a jazz musician, he isn't, okay? and uh, so forth and so on. Uh, we're absolutely opposite uh, to each other and when we're placed next to each other we make each other look really really good. Okay, now if I get into his business too much or he gets into my business too much what happens is we get mud. So when you mix two complements together you end up with with a muddy color and so you want to keep them somewhat separate but next to each other and uh, they will just enhance whatever it is that you're painting. So today we're going to work on the complementary colors. Of, we're going to work one at a time here. We're going to work on the complementary color of red versus green, or red next to green, or red enhancing green. Isn't that going to be nice? Think about Christmas and you'll have it down. So what have I got? Well, I've got three apples and our tonal values in gray, and we're going to glaze some color over them. And uh, I, you know, I think we'll do a, a golden apple too. So we'll do a dark red apple, a green apple, and a golden apple on our light apple, and we'll glaze some color over using our complementary idea. We'll see how far we get. Okay, on my palette today, I have some purple, which is a dark red. Okay, that's a very, very dark red with a little bit of blue in it. I have some alizarin crimson, which is going to be really our dark red uh, that we're really going to focus on. And I have some middle of the road red color. I think it's um, something like, oh gosh, uh, kind of a crimson color. And then I have a Hansa yellow that I'll mix together to make a bit of an orange. And in my greens, I have some sap green and uh, an interesting middle green and a little yellow. I have a little bit of teal, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to use that here in a moment, and some white. And then on top of that, I have my glazing medium. Now, when you're uh, using a glaze, you want to always use a translucent or transparent color. Don't go miss trying to glaze with uh, something like raw sienna or a you know brown color. That's not going to really work. You want to have something that you can actually see through a little bit, especially when you add a glaze to it. Anything that you add white to is going to be opaque. Opaque means you can't see through it, okay? Translucent would be like shears or a thin piece of silk that you can see through, see light through. Transparent is like your glass window, and opaque means, you know, your son's sweatshirt. You just can't see through it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to dip it into my my gel medium. This is dry. This is all acrylic dry. I did it last night and I'm going to start, let's just start with this dark one 
and see how far we get. Now I'm putting a little bit of the medium on it, just the medium, uh, just getting it kind of wet. It has a little bit of yellow tone to it. I can feel that. I don't know how, where that came from. Probably in my brush. Anyway, and now I'm going to take our middle value um, red to start with. And I'm going to paint that red. It's a bit pinkish right there. And so I'm going to put this in. And normally I would use probably a, a cadmium red light on some of these apples, just depending on what it is. I'm going to actually cover this entire apple with this red. And I'm not getting fussy with it, everybody. I'm going to, it doesn't matter if I go over the edge or not, I can always clean it. Look at that. I just let it go. And I'm just kind of coming back at it. And there's this nice color. Now I can take a, a rag or a little bit of a towel. This is my Viva towel. And I can come back in and kind of correct that because it's dry underneath. Okay. And now I'm going to come in and I'm going to take up uh, take some of that highlight off with my rag and my cloth and clean that up and I can use a q-tip if I want to get fussy on it and I can just clean that up. I, I want this to be kind of loose on the outside too so uh, I, I don't want it to be a really tight edge if I can possibly get away with not being super fussy. So okay now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to add the darker red, which is the alizarin crimson. Okay, now I'm going to add the, the darker red. And, uh, and you can see how that, that just kind of enhances it. And I'll put a little bit of dark right here, maybe a little bit right there. So I've got my, my darker color, my lighter color. I want to make this come up just a little bit more into the bright red color. There we go. I've added just a little bit of Hansa yellow to make that a brighter red now. Okay, now uh, as I move into the light part of this apple, I'm now going to use some of the Hansa uh, yellow and with a little bit of my red and we're going to make this a little bit lighter and a little bit more into the yellow tone. And you can see how that doesn't look make it look like an orange apple, it just makes it look a little bit lighter in its red. All right, and then I'm going to take that and stroke that down here, and we're going to bring that down like this. Okay. Now, uh, what I want to do to make this look even deeper, this is where the complementary color comes in, everybody. So now I'm going to, what I do is I take, I've got my middle tone, my light, and my dark, and now I'm going to add the complement to the shadow side of the apple. So that means I'm going to add my alizarin crimson to a little bit of sap green. Let's see what happens. Well, now I've got this going into a much darker tone right there. Alizarin crimson and sap green will make that go into a darker tone, and it, it turns that apple to where it becomes a three-dimensional object. All right, so that's our first little apple uh, beginning. And then I want to make um, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a reflected light that comes back up onto the apple. So I'm going to make a little bit of a lighter. Let's see if I can make that work. I'll grab some uh, Hansa yellow. Hansa yellow, and uh, let's throw that into that that side looks like there's a little bit of a reflective light that kind of comes up. And you can ding around with that as much as you like, but um, I'll come back in. I think I'll broaden that darker value just a little bit. And there we have that. Now, uh, the other thing I want to think about is what color is, is the highlight? The highlight on the apple. We're missing that, aren't we? Yeah. Well, you could do one of a couple of things. You could put a light yellow highlight on there. One of my favorite things to do is to add a light teal highlight. Let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to take my teal and I'm going to mix it with a little bit of white, a lot of white. It's going to be mostly white with a little bit of teal. Let's try it and see what happens. Okay, so now I'm going to come across the form a little bit this way and I'm going to add that to it. Now that's pretty zingy. And then I'm going to say, all right, well, if it hits here, it might, I don't know, it might hit a little bit around here. And then uh, maybe I'll drag it down just a tad on the side like this and a little bit up here on the top and a little bit right there. So I've added this teal color, which is kind of a greenish color, everybody. So it's a little bit of a greenish color into the highlight. 
that teal green into the highlight will give it kind of that complementary zing. Now, I don't know if you can actually see that teal, but I can up here. And uh, maybe let me make it just a little bit more, a little more tealy here, just a sec. Yeah, that'll make it easier for you to see. So there, there's a little bit of a teal right there. I'm going to darken that teal over onto this side of the apple right there. And then I'll fuss back that thing, the edge of that apple back into that red just a little bit. Now I don't want to just over mix it and to where it just turns into mud again, I'm, but I'm going to fuse the, the outside area where that, that highlight comes in. I'm going to kind of fuse the edges of that into the apple itself a little bit. And that's one of my little tricks. Now if I want to make this just a little bit higher, I'm going to come back in with, with mostly white and a little bit of yellow. And let's see what happens there. And then I'm going to add another bit right into that. So I've got a little bit of yellow, a little bit of teal, and I'm, I'm bringing that up. Now, uh, I'll make it just a little lighter. Sometimes I'll, I will, I'll confess, I'll add just some straight white, but I'm going to work it into it. I don't want to have a straight white highlight on anything. Otherwise, as Helen Van Wyck used to say, it looks like a chicken with a highlight foot walked across it. See how it kind of has this kind of aura around it? And now I'm going to take this little uh, corner with a little bit of just straight white, and I'm going to put that on there, and it just really makes it, you know, stand up and shout. Okay, so that's our first apple. Let's try another one. Now the next one I want to, to do, we'll do in kind of a yellow green, but I'm going to start with our orange color to begin with, and that's our middle color just to start with. So I'm going to just base this in in this orange color, like that, fast, fast, fast. I just think about it, it's what's in the inside too. You know, I'm thinking about what's on the inside of that apple if I were to bite into it a little bit. Now this one's a little bit lighter, you can really tell. This one's a little bit lighter. And again, I'm going to take my little rag Okay, so I'm taking out a little bit of that highlight right there, and I'm thinking about that. And then I'm going to come back in, wipe off my brush, and I'm going to now take a little bit of our middle green with a little bit of yellow, okay? And we're going to come in like this. This is a permanent green light that's made by Winsor & Newton. And so I'm going to, with a little bit of yellow, I'm going to go in here and we're going to take this uh, Windsor Newton permanent green light and add it to our little apple here. Our green apple with the gold inside. There we go. And so I've got it just kind of a little, little streaky there. I'm going to add some bright yellow to it right on the side like this. Very good. What would happen if I added just a tad bit of red into, yes, that's it, a little bit of our complementary color. Our, only this time I'm going to have the middle of the road red, not the super dark red. I'm going to use a little bit of the red into this apple just barely on one side. And you can see how that makes it kind of set off a little bit. Now, wait a sec, let's try a little bit of that dark green too, okay? A little bit of the dark green. I don't want this turning into lighter green, darker green, okay? There was a restaurant in my hometown when I grew up called Lighter Brown, Darker Brown. And uh, it was a great idea. It was run by a real kooky guy who actually started a cult and kidnapped a bunch of women, shaved their heads, and kept them in a basement. But that's neither here nor there. But you do want to avoid it, don't you? You want to avoid lighter brown, darker brown, lighter green, darker green. You want to have some interest. So here we go. I'm adding this, this red color over to the side along with our darker green intermittently. So I've got a little bit of green, a little bit of red, 
and you can see I'm not mixing them together you guys I'm not mixing them together I'm kind of putting them I'm not just mixing the tar out of them I'm actually putting them together like this okay and put a little bit more red in there just for interest it kind of reflects that apple next door it doesn't change the color of the apple it's not all of a sudden a red apple is it it's still a green apple and then we're going to have to find our highlight again okay I'm going to wipe off my brush get rid of a lot of that extra red and we're going to come up with again that I think we're going to try that light teal with a little bit of lemon yellow this time let's see what happens that's lemon yellow and here is the light teal that's pretty good yeah light teal I love that and I'm going to drag this down just a little bit on the side so that we have something to work with in our highlight also lightens up the light side of the apple pull that across a little bit like that okay now let's get a little bit stronger light on the top and uh, this time I'm going to add just some white right there and I'm just going to kind of work it in just a tad okay so the next one's a yellow apple or a golden apple and I'm going to take a little bit of my Hansa yellow deep and my um, my kind of cadmium yellow light and I'm going to put that in and here we go we've got our next apple this one's going to be a little bit different everybody so I'm just basing that in getting that all nice and yellow in that middle tone yellow there we go now the darker uh, let's see let's go light first okay so I'm going to go up a little bit with my yellow I'm going to go a little bit a um, little bit lighter over here there we go lighter on one side and then I'm going to go darker on the other side and that's going to be into our orange color okay so uh, let's see cadmium orange which I'm making with our red and yellow okay let's see if I can get that darkened up there's a little darker a little more of our red into our yellow to make it an orange color so I'm making a darker color on this side there that is it's a little more subtle on this one so it's kind of got an orange color on the side a little bit of the greenish color mixing in and out there and I'll put that in the middle there now uh, in order for me to get this thing to work as far as the darker shadow side of the apple I'm also going to think about its complement now the complement to yellow I know we were only going to deal with yellow with red and green today but I'm going to give you a hint on what's happening next and the complement to yellow is violet or purple okay so what I'm going to do now in order to get this to go a little bit darker I'm going to take our, our orange color and I'm going to add violet to it and then I'm going to put it on this side. I know that looks a little bit weird but it does tend to turn it. Now we have to be a little bit careful that we don't create mud on that one but you can see how that apple begins to turn as you add a little bit of dark purple or violet to it. So I have, okay here let's try it again. Okay so let's try that violet color there it is Ooh, isn't that pretty so uh, that's a little bit better I'm going to make the shadow violet as well okay good so I'm going to wipe that off wipe my brush off keep it clean keeping my colors clean go back into the Hansa yellow with a little bit of yellow in it and I'm going to work that up a little bit next to the color and then I'm going to add a little bit of that yellowish kind of green color on this side and give it a reflected light there and then we'll come back up again with our highlights one more time let's try it white and this time again with the teal come up here with the teal right there and then I would also like to try 
a little bit of light lavender at the very top for our highlight. Okay, so let's try that and see if we like that. Okay, here's our light lavender color. Okay, so now on our highlight, I'm going to add just a, maybe a little touch of light lavender. Let's just see what happens. I'm not really sure about it, but I think we'll try. Yeah, that's nice. I like that. Put a little bit of that. Make sure it's just mostly white and then a little bit of lavender. And then I'll, I'll kind of blend out the edges as it goes back into the space a little bit. And wherever the light is catching like that. I'm going to go down into that apple with a little bit of the, the orange color to make that shadow as it goes in. Now I'm going to go back into our straight yellow, wiping my brush off. Cadmium yellow light. Brighten it up and just kind of tweak it a little bit. I don't want to lose the yellow quality, but I want to make sure that there's something interesting uh, around it. Okay, the trickiest thing that I'm discovering is that is that yellow and violet combination. You want to make sure that you don't get too, um, too red in the purple. I tend to lean a little bit more towards the blue when I'm doing these violet combinations. And then I'll move in and I'll put in an orange right next to it and work my way up to that lighter yellow. So uh, I'm going to work on this for a little bit longer. I'm going to put a nice warm uh, kind of a cream color yellow table on there and then what color will my shadows be? Well, I'll tell you, they're going to be in the violet color because the table is in the yellow range. It will be. Now, uh, I wouldn't uh, put shadows according to each individual fruit. I'm going to make the shadows a complement to what color the tabletop is. Don't get that one wrong. All right. I'll be right back and I'll show you how it looks in the end. Okay, everybody, uh, this is as far as I'm going to go. I went about 45 minutes longer on my own, put that yellow tabletop on, laid in those violet shadows underneath, the cast shadow, and then I put in that dark dioxazine purple in the background to pop the apples forward. That looked pretty good. Yeah. So next time we meet, we are going to be on lesson number six on how to become a real artist. And I'm going to be sharing with you over the next several videos the top 10 mistakes that make our paintings look amateur, okay? And then I'm going to show you how to fix that. So really, really important that you tune in. And don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends. Don't forget to watch those ads every once in a while. That's how we get paid, okay? So I'll see you guys next time. And uh, thanks again so much for watching. Bye-bye for now.